This video explores the emotion of fear. Now fear is what we feel when we're scared by either a real or a perceived danger. A perceived danger is something that triggers fear even though it's not actually dangerous, like the dark say for example. But before we explore fear in more detail, I'm going to start by saying, like with several emotions, especially the ones we are most aware of, there are several words that could be used to describe feeling fear. Here are some words that could be used to describe a person feeling fear. Scared, petrified, terrified, panicky, alarmed, spooked, fearful, afraid, frightened, nervous and intimidated which is a fear caused by another person making us feel threatened in some way. There are also some phrases that are used to describe feeling fear or being scared such as full of dread, jumped out of my skin, made my blood run cold, my heart missed a beat, quaking in my boots and scared the living daylights out of me. We can be scared of lots of different things. Anything that makes us feel or believe that we're in danger or being threatened can trigger fear. A list of some things that we could be scared of that sometimes do turn out to be dangerous include a cliff, wild animals, bullies, the sea, dogs, crossing the road, fire and sharp tools. Even though all of these things could be dangerous and could cause us harm, there are always things we can do to reduce the chances of ever actually getting hurt, such as never walking too close to the edge of a cliff, keeping a safe distance away from wild animals, reporting bullying to adults until one of them does something about it, never going too far out to sea when we're swimming, asking a dog's owner if their dog is friendly before approaching it, crossing roads carefully and using pedestrian crossings when possible, never getting too close to a fire and never putting trip hazards close to it, using tools in a safe way or asking an adult for help if we don't think we can. So even though we can encounter things that can be dangerous, there are always things we can do to reduce the risk of any harm. There are not usually many times in our lives when we're in real danger of being harmed or hurt. But when we do experience situations where our safety is at risk, it's important to get away, find help and do all you can to stay safe. But this video isn't about what you need to do to keep yourself as safe as possible. You can find that information in other places. This video is about the emotion of fear. Many things that we end up scared of nowadays, however, are not actually very likely to harm us or won't harm us at all. Things that we can be scared of that are not actually or very rarely dangerous include the dark, going to the dentist, going in a lift, talking in front of lots of people, thunder and lightning, although very rarely people are struck by lightning which can be dangerous, it doesn't happen often enough to make it necessary to be scared of it every time it happens. Big changes in our lives, like changing schools, loud noises, these can scare us because loud noises can sometimes mean something might be about to squash or hit us. Large groups of people can scare some people. Spiders, although if you live in some countries that are not the UK, spiders can actually be dangerous. Tests or exams at school or going on an aeroplane, even though it's safer than getting into a car. People who find planes scarier than cars usually do so because they feel less in control in an aeroplane than they do in a car. This shows us that our fear response can be triggered by things that are very rarely or not dangerous at all, and this can be unhelpful. So why did we evolve fear? Well, we evolved fear many, many years ago to keep us safe. Thousands of years ago, we lived in a way where coming across real dangers like an angry enemy or a fierce animal that wanted to kill and eat us would happen more often than it would nowadays. What's more, these dangers had a real chance of hurting or killing us. So we evolved the fear response to help us escape from danger. Let me explain how. When people encounter danger, the fear response is triggered. It's triggered by a hormone called adrenaline. Adrenaline is released into our blood 
And just so you know, a hormone is like a little messenger traveling around our bodies, telling our body systems what to do. When the fear response is triggered, adrenaline sets off responses in our bodies that prepare us to fight or run away. The adrenaline means that we have more strength and energy because it tells our body to breathe more quickly and makes our heart pump faster. This means blood takes food and oxygen more quickly to our muscles to make more energy available. The fear response therefore means we have more energy and strength to fight or run. You can see how this response would be really helpful if we were being chased by an animal or enemy that was trying to attack us. Our brains and bodies still have the fear response even though we need it far less often nowadays. It, unfortunately, it can still be triggered even though we hardly ever have reason to run away from danger. The fear response can be triggered by things that scare us, even things that are very, very unlikely to cause us any physical harm. Things like having a test, doing a performance or starting a new school. When the fear response is triggered by modern day fears that will not actually harm us, such as exams, performances, or having too much to do and not thinking that we can cope, there is of course absolutely no need to fight or run away. But our body doesn't know this and it still releases adrenaline, which prepares the body to be able to run away or fight. Our brains and bodies can't tell the difference between a fear that could actually hurt us and a fear that is caused by our heads finding something scary or finding everything a bit too much. Often things that trigger a fear response in us nowadays are things that we feel uncertain about. It made sense for people who lived thousands of years ago to feel fear when they were uncertain because uncertainty could well mean that there was a danger. Let me give an example. Say someone thousands of years ago was walking into a dark cave for the first time. It would be a good idea for that person to feel fearful so that they stayed alert and could get out of the cave quickly if they needed to, say if they found an angry bear inside. But we don't have uncertainty that leads to danger very often nowadays, so that fear response is not particularly helpful. Nowadays, often things that we cannot be certain about can still trigger a fear response, even though it's very rarely needed. It seems like our body's thoughts and emotions are rather daft when they can trigger the same fear response standing to talk to a large group of people as much as they would if we were being chased by a tiger. We might be scared when we need to stand up in front of a large group of people to talk to them, but we certainly don't need to fight anyone or run away. We might be scared because we are uncertain how things will go and uncertain about our ability to cope as if we were walking into a cave for the first time. When the thing triggering fear is something we're uncertain about, it can stick in our heads so that we think about it over and over again. These thoughts can end up triggering the fear response continuously and our body gets the message that it needs extra energy to get away from or fight the danger, even though there is no real danger. This unnecessary and unused energy can lead to someone feeling stressed, worried and anxious and like there is a constant background feeling of uneasiness and this feeling can make a person worry more. Feeling this way is fine for a short while and it can actually help us focus sometimes but when some people end up feeling stressed, worried or anxious a lot of the time this can be exhausting and very unpleasant. Something else about the fear response to note is that some people tend to feel stressed, worried or anxious more than others. Some people are just wired up that way. Those who tend to worry more would have been the people on high alert when we lived in a tribe thousands of years ago. Even though most of the time there was no threat of danger, their constant worrying kept them alert and meant that when there was eventually an attack, they were quick to notice it and alert the rest of the tribe so everyone could get away from the danger. It seems unfair on those people who worry more than most people as it certainly doesn't make life easy. 
The symptoms of feeling stressed, worried or anxious are triggered by the fear response and therefore have a lot of the same symptoms that we have when we're scared. Although these symptoms are usually not as strong as when we feel fear, they can last a lot longer than the immediate fear response that responds directly to a danger. The symptoms of stress, worry and anxiety can include not being able to sleep well, feeling tense, having a continuous feeling like something is going to go terribly wrong, like a constant feeling of dread, your heart pounding, breathing quickly, sweating, feeling tired or weak, having trouble concentrating, shaking or trembling, a tummy ache, ruminating about things, that's when you think about the same troubling thought over and over, catastrophizing about things, that's when you think that everything that could go wrong will go wrong, avoiding anything that you think will trigger fear, worry, stress or anxiety. Sometimes some people experience fear as a panic attack. This is where the body has a strong and sudden fear response and the person cannot do anything other than take time out to deal with the attack. A panic attack is very noticeable to the person who experiences it. Panic attacks are not helpful. They can be really unpleasant for the person experiencing them. But with help, people can learn to prevent them. Some people feel scared of the feeling that they get in their bodies during a panic attack, but this feeling never lasts for more than 10 minutes and it will not actually hurt them. The fear response is a natural response that's designed to keep you safe, not harm you. When people have a panic attack, it's best just to let the feeling take over and wait for it to go. It certainly won't last long. Sometimes when people develop strong fears of things that are no risk to their safety, they develop phobias. Now a phobia is a strong fear of something, such that every time that the person sees the thing that they have a phobia of, they panic. Examples of the kind of things people can have phobias of are the dark, getting into lifts, or insects. We get phobias either because we once had a bad experience with the thing that we've developed a phobia of, or we learnt to be scared of something from an adult in our childhood because they reacted so fearfully every time they saw or experienced a particular thing. A phobia is an overreaction because most of the things people have phobias of have very little or no risk of danger. Sadly, phobias often make the person avoid the thing that they have a phobia of. This makes the situation worse as it strengthens the idea in the person's memory that the thing is actually really dangerous. So the brain will keep triggering the fear response each time a person goes near the thing that they have a phobia of. People usually need help to overcome phobias, often by learning to cope with the panic the fear response can trigger and by slowly building up to not avoiding the thing that they're phobic of. Phobias are another example of the fear response not being really helpful in our modern lives. So when our fear response is triggered unnecessarily in response to something that's not really dangerous, it can be really uncomfortable, whether it's making us feel stressed or anxious or if we're having a panic attack, it's really not very pleasant. To help us think about how to soothe the fear response, it can help if we understand that as well as the fear response that's good for fighting or running, we also have a body and mind state that helps us to rest, save energy and digest our food. Here come some long words, but don't worry about remembering them. The fear response triggers the sympathetic system, the one that gives us energy to run away or fight. The parasympathetic system is a far more relaxed state and this is the state that means we can feel calm. We can't feel both states at the same time, so when the parasympathetic system is up and running, we can't feel stressed or anxious. So many of the things that we can do to help when we're feeling stressed, worried or anxious are things that stimulate our parasympathetic system. Activities that trigger our parasympathetic system give our bodies a clear sign that there is no danger and that we can relax. Things that we can do to trigger this state are all the things we usually do to relax ourselves. 
These can include massage. Try massaging your feet if nobody's there to massage you. Walking outdoors in nature. Listening to music that you love. Breathing deeply, especially if you take longer to breathe out than you take to breathe in. So for example, you could breathe out to the count of five and breathe in to the count of four. Playing and stroking with pets is calming for most people. Yoga is excellent for soothing us. You could start by following some instructions for poses that can be found on the internet. Meditation is also calming. The simplest meditation is to sit quietly and say the same sound in your head over and over. Some people choose the word OM, for example. It doesn't matter if your head still whizzes around thinking while you meditate. It will still do you some good. People get better at meditating the more that they practice it and the calming effect gets better the more frequently you do it. Doing something you love doing can be calming, especially if it's all that you're thinking about while you're doing it. Picturing yourself somewhere lovely can be calming. I even read somewhere that touching your lips can activate the parasympathetic system. Maybe that's worth a try. Different things will soothe different people, so it's important for you to work out what works well for you. Something else that I'd like to say about fear that's a bit different is that sometimes some people like to trigger their fear response deliberately because it's exciting. An example of this is going on a roller coaster at a fairground. A roller coaster, for example, can trigger a rush of adrenaline, but the reason this doesn't feel terrible is because it's for a short amount of time, the person on the roller coaster knows that it's safe and they feel in control because they made the decision to go on the ride. Likewise, a horror movie scares people deliberately, so they produce adrenaline, but again, people feel in control and they can always turn the film off if it gets too much. And it probably won't surprise you to hear that some people enjoy an adrenaline rush more than others. So what have we learnt? Well, we've learnt that we evolved fear to keep us safe. We've learnt that the fear response can be triggered by real dangers as well as things that our brain has decided are scary. We've learnt that the fear response is linked to anxiety, stress and worry. We've learnt that we should not be scared of the fear response itself. And we've learnt that there are calming activities that we can do that mean we spend less time feeling fearful.